Hello, I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. This video is specifically geared for individuals who have already been diagnosed with and treated for posterior canal benign proxismal positional vertigo, or BPPV, and are looking for additional treatment options besides the Epley maneuver. I'm going to describe and demonstrate two alternative canaleth repositioning maneuvers, the Diaz repositioning maneuver and the half somersault. This video is meant to be a companion video or a part two video to follow my first BPPV video, which is linked above and in the description below, where I presented a great deal of information on vertigo. Specifically, I described and demonstrated the gold standard testing and treatment procedures, which are the Dix Hall Pike test and the Epley Canalith repositioning maneuver. If you haven't already seen that video, please watch it before continuing on with this video. The information, testing, and treatment procedures contained in that video will likely be beneficial for the vast majority of people. Also, I will not be repeating the baseline foundational information about BPPV in this video. Finally, the procedures in this video should not be attempted without a strong foundational understanding of BPPV. Let's continue. The Epley maneuver, which I demonstrated in my first video, is the most well-known canalith repositioning maneuver. Epley has been used for decades, and it has been shown to be effective in resolving BPPV in just one to three sessions in over 85% of posterior canal BPPV cases. With that said, Epley does not work for everyone and for a variety of reasons. For example, the positions required for Epley are not feasible for many people with severe neck and back pain. Also, some people simply do not tolerate the positions required to complete the Epley maneuver. Now, there are several other maneuvers that are commonly used in the clinic that are very similar to Epley. For this video, I've specifically chosen these two alternative repositioning maneuvers. The Diaz repositioning maneuver, which is a brand new maneuver as of 2023, and a half somersault exercise. Now I'm going to jump ahead of the introduction to BPPV that I included in my first video. But one point worth repeating is that I strongly recommend you see your primary healthcare provider if you have any serious symptoms such as blacking out, severe headaches, any changes in your vision, hearing, or speech, and any numbness, tingling, or weakness. These could be signs of a more serious condition that require medical attention. Okay, let's move on to these two maneuvers. Both the Diaz repositioning maneuver and the half somersault exercise are best done following the Dix Hall Pike test to determine which side needs to be treated. Some people advocate choosing the side that brings on the symptoms while lying in bed. This is accurate some of the time, but not always. To be sure, it's best to do the Dix Hall Pike test. All right, I'll quickly review the Dix Hall Pike test. For a deeper dive into the Dix Hall Pike, see my first BPPV video. Sitting on a supportive surface with your knees straight or bent, turn your head 45 degrees to the right. Lie back on a pillow supporting your shoulders so that your head is tipped back and supported on the surface. Maintain the 45 degree angle to the right. Hold this position for at least 30 seconds, continuing to breathe. Monitor your symptoms, rating your vertigo from one to 10, or mild, moderate, or severe, whatever rating method works best for you. After 30 seconds, return to a seated position. Rest for a moment, turn your head to the left, 45 degrees, and lie back with your shoulders and upper back supported on the pillow, and your head tilted back, supported on the mattress or the surface. Maintain the 45 degree angle to the left. Again, monitor your symptoms, rating your vertigo on a scale of one to 10 or mild, moderate, or severe. After 30 seconds, return to a seated position and rest. Whichever side provoked the strongest symptoms is the side that should be treated. If you had symptoms on both sides, that's a good indication of bilateral BPPV. Start treating the side that provoked the strongest symptoms. Again, I provided a lot more information about bilateral BPPV in my first vertigo video. 
Okay, let's move on to the Canela 3 positioning maneuvers. Both of these maneuvers move the crystals out of the canal, and you'll likely feel spinning as you move through the positions of the maneuver. This is a necessary part of the process. Sometimes it's helpful to have a friend or family member with you to provide support and to help you feel safe. In cases of severe vertigo, nausea and vomiting are possible. So keeping a trash bin handy is also recommended. We have more power than we think to change our bodies and improve our health. Giving yourself reassurance throughout this process can be very helpful to improve your tolerance for symptoms that naturally come up through the testing and treatment procedures. If you would like written instructions and images to go along with these repositioning maneuvers, I've created a printable PDF which is available on my website for purchase. Click the link in the description below to find that booklet. I've also created booklets with written instructions and images for the Dix Hall Pike test, the Epley maneuver, as well as the roll test and the barbecue roll cantilever three positioning maneuvers. All of those booklets are available on my website. Okay, first we'll start with the Diaz repositioning maneuver. This maneuver is similar to Epley with slight variations. Most notably, the Diaz maneuver combines the second and third positions in the Epley maneuver. This is likely to be more tolerable, but just as effective in moving the crystals out of the canal. First, I'll demonstrate a right-sided Diaz repositioning maneuver. Again, perform on the side that brought on the symptoms during the Dix Hall Pike test. Turn your head 45 degrees to the right of center. Lie back quickly, keeping your head turned 45 degrees to the right. With your shoulders on the pillow, head tilted back, approximately 20 degrees and supported on the mattress or the surface. Wait until vertigo stops and then wait another one minute. After one minute, turn your head 90 degrees to the left of center. Try to roll your head on the pillow instead of lifting it up and then back down. Wait two minutes in this position. Continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Finally, bring your legs over the side of the bed and sit up to the left. Keep your head tilted down and turned 45 degrees to the left. Rest two minutes in this position. Now for a left Diaz repositioning maneuver. Turn your head 45 degrees to the left of center. Lie back quickly, keeping your head turned 45 degrees to the left. Shoulders on the pillow and head tilted back approximately 20 degrees and supported on the mattress. Wait until vertigo stops and then wait another one full minute. Continue breathing. After one minute, turn your head 90 degrees to the right of center. Wait in this position two full minutes. Continue breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Finally, bring your legs over the side of the bed and sit up to the right. Keep your head tilted down and turned 45 degrees to the right. Rest two minutes in this position. Since this is a brand new maneuver as of 2023, there isn't a lot of information available about the number of, of repetitions recommended. I suggest starting with one repetition. If vertigo doesn't fully resolve, then you may perform a second repetition, waiting at least 15 minutes to allow time for the crystals to settle. Now let's move on to the half somersault exercise. Now the half somersault, as instructed by Dr. Carol Foster, does not start with the Dix Hall Pike test. Many people who cannot tolerate the head hanging position or the symptom provocation of Dix Hall Pike prefer the half somersault exercise. It tends to cause less severe vertigo than the Epley, which makes it more appealing to many people. However, it typically requires more sessions to fully resolve VPPV. 
especially if the Dix-Hall Pike test is not done to confirm the side involved. It also requires more mobility. Specifically, it requires the person to tolerate a kneeling position and specific movements of the neck that might not be possible for everyone. Now, these are different movements than Epley, but they still might be difficult for somebody with severe neck or back pain. Now, how do you know which side to treat? The original instructions from Dr. Foster included, the side that you get the dizziest when you lie down and roll over, that's the side to treat. So if you roll to your right and it brings on the spin, and when you roll to the left, it goes away or it's not as bad, then you would treat the right side. In my clinical experience, that pattern of symptom provocation is sometimes accurate, but not always. In my professional opinion, it's a reasonable place to start, especially if you need help right away and you can't get to a professional in a timely manner. Now I'll demonstrate the half somersault exercise on the right side followed by the half somersault exercise for the left side. Start in a kneeling position on a soft surface. Tip your head straight up so that you're looking at the ceiling. Hold this position for a few seconds. This helps to start the particles moving. Then bend forward and put your head completely upside down, tucking your chin so that your head is tucked under slightly. Turn your head toward your right elbow. Hold this position until the spinning stops at least 30 seconds. Quickly raise your head to horizontal, even with your back, keeping your head turned to the right 45 degrees. Wait until the spinning stops or at least 30 seconds. Quickly bring your head fully upright, returning to a kneeling position with your head turned to the right 45 degrees. Wait until spinning stops or at least 30 seconds. Now for the half somersault on the left side. Tip your head straight up so that you're looking at the ceiling. Hold this position for a few seconds. Then bend forward and put your head completely upside down. Turn your head toward your left elbow. Hold this position until the spinning stops, at least 30 seconds. Next, quickly raise your head to horizontal, even with your back keeping your head turned to the left 45 degrees. Wait until spinning stops or at least 30 seconds. Finally, quickly bring your head fully upright, returning to a kneeling position with your head turned to the left. Wait until spinning stops or at least 30 seconds. Vertigo might resolve after doing this maneuver just once, but it can take four to five repetitions best to wait 15 minutes to allow time for the crystals to settle. My additional recommendation is to increase the duration of the hold in the last three positions. Based on my recommendation, you would hold the first position where you're kneeling and your head is tilted back just a couple of seconds. Then when your head is upside down and turned toward the knee, wait until vertigo stops and an additional 30 seconds. Then when your head is horizontal and when you return to sitting, I again recommend waiting until any vertigo stops and an additional 30 seconds. With both of these maneuvers, I recommend doing one session per day. I also suggest starting each day with the Dix Hall Pike test. This is very helpful to determine when a particular canal has cleared. I also want to give you a heads up about a vertigo hangover. This can occur anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks after vertigo has fully resolved. The vertigo hangover is a general blah feeling with low energy, sometimes foggy head or difficulty concentrating. This is quite common and does fully resolve in time. This is a good reminder to be sure that you are getting enough sleep that you're eating well and drinking enough fluids to stay hydrated, all of, it, all of which will help your body heal. Now there is no specific exercise to prevent recurrence. Some people do quite well sleeping on an incline of about 20 degrees. I also recommend avoiding quick jarring head movements and repetitive head movements. I recommend avoiding high impact exercise such as running. 
and any exercise that involves a repeated head movement, such as doing the cross stroke while swimming, or yoga when doing the downward dog. Waiting one to two weeks after vertigo stops is a reasonable guideline before returning to those activities on a gradual basis. If your condition doesn't improve within one to two weeks, it's best to see your PCP or physiotherapist. Other healthcare specialties that may be beneficial for vestibular evaluation include ear, nose, and throat and neurology. Also, alternative healthcare options such as acupuncture and massage therapy can also be beneficial. Consultation can be helpful as interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness-based practices have been shown to decrease symptoms in some vestibular conditions. And finally, if you continue to feel disequilibrium or imbalance after your vertigo has fully resolved, you might benefit from beginning vestibular rehabilitation. Click the link in the description below to check out my vestibular rehabilitation video series. I hope you found this information and these two canalith repositioning maneuvers helpful for you to resolve posterior canal BPPV. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave any questions or comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.